people who come freshly to a place where they've heard that some kind of meditation is going on or people who come there and have meditated for a long time often ask this question is there a practice that you can teach me so this mind which is so scattered unruly driving me crazy can quiet down without the practice people say there's no way in which there can be order in this mind <coughs> so can you give me a practice or what practice do you teach Why does one want to be rid or free of this unruly mind? Has one understood it in the least bit? Is one interested? in how this mind ticks, functions from one instant to the next interested in the interrelationship of thought and feeling and emotion why we become angry at the moment we become angry how this anger functions the consequences of it from instant to instant is one interested in this or does one want a practice to forget about all of that to be to remain out of touch with it, ignorant of it. There are all kind of practices to calm down, tranquilize, sedate the mind, the thoughts. But does such a practice help to have insight into this whole network of thinking and emoting, which is the, the daily grind, the, the turmoil, the misery or the pleasure of our moment-to-moment -moment living is one interested in how we function alone and in relationship with each other to really see what is happening the, the meaninglessness of it What, what we're asking here is, can one sit with it, walk with it, live with it, talk, 
think and be aware. For the first time in one's life, be aware of what is really going on. If, if this is a, a, an, an all-consuming interest, a concern, as it wouldn't have been practiced for thousands of years, can one leave aside, put aside one's knowledge of all venerable traditional practices and listen to the breathing? because this is what is happening every moment, every moment freshly. A new breath which has never occurred before and will never occur again. Why does one need to concentrate on it? Why can't one just listen in all simplicity as one is sitting? Listen to the breathing because it's there not follow any imagined, prescribed course or control the breathing so it becomes deep or yogic. Being at odds with when it is shallow, wanting to control it. Just wondering what this is that is happening in each one of us every moment whether we're concentrating on it or not, just to, to listen with a deep wonderment, listening, sensing, experiencing this, what we call breathing. Not have any idea about it, what it does for us, that it is good, or helpful, just to listen in wonderment. Inwardly. And not exclusively. Not, I must now listen to this and everything else around is a distraction which I must fight ignore, control. No, the, the sound of the, of the cars, this hum that has been going on here, the ticking of the thermostat, someone swallowing, the feeling in the knees or the seat, the hands, the heart beating. All of that is not interfere with breathing. It's all going on at the same time. Can it come into awareness simultaneously without any control, without any preference, without any labeling, this is this and this is that? Since we're talking with each other, we're labeling, but in and quietly sitting with a mind that is wondering what, is, what it is all about to live this moment, putting aside all one knows, all of one's ideas and theories and philosophies about, it. just there. Not the description of it, or the explanation, or the rationalization, justification. Leave all that aside. And be open to what is actually happening. And in, in so sitting, one may find, as 
very little attention, very little awareness. I'm thinking about at a glance about yesterday, about tomorrow, what one would like to happen, what one is afraid may happen. To just see it at the moment of coming to, at the moment of waking up for an instant. Just to see what it was that the mind was occupied with. And stop there. No further comment upon it. No condemnation of it, no beating of the heart, the sound of the traffic. Not concentrating on it, but just the, the simple openness of attention. Can there be awareness of how one thought about something that happened, something that was done to us, somebody did to us, can get this whole organism embroiled in what we call anger, jealousy, envy, desire, fear, One fleeting thought, usually not noticed, so quick or so semi-conscious, but the, now the whole organism afire with emotion and all the sensations that go with emotion. Faster heartbeat, churning of the intestines, tightening of the muscles rushing of blood to the head, narrowing of seeing, of vision and, and hearing in the presence of a strong emotion. Really the inability to, to listen and perceive accurately as this emotion is, is raging throughout the body, triggered by thought which may or may not have been perceived at all. one become aware of that, understand it, see the consequences of thoughts throughout this body and in our relationship with each other. Because at the moment of a triggered emotion like anger, we cannot perceive each other as we are. Therefore, the, the source of present and future misunderstandings can one understand this as it happens in oneself? So one doesn't need to judge anger as good or bad, right or wrong, but just see what it does as it arises, the consequences of it. not cutting off attention, allowing it to, to, to inform. So that we're learning about ourselves and each other as we go. Not as the books say we are constituted or should or should not proceed. A, a discussion period yesterday in Springwater. A very intense hour and a half, which dealt 
if I remember correctly, at times it was very difficult to keep track of all that was being said, and the pro and con, a repar very quick repartee among some people. But it was mainly concerned with our relationship with each other. One person started it by saying something like this. Recently, having gotten very angry and frustrated at a small discussion among friends after watching a movie, angry and frustrated about some people just voicing wisdoms which did not seem to be really felt or understood, just quoting, imitating someone or parroting someone, rather than speaking out of any depth of understanding. And the, the anger and frustration at this going on and others Someone else felt that unless in, in a relationship there is a real straightforwardness and what he called aggressiveness in putting forth what one feels, there's very little uh, life to a relationship, maybe no possibility for a relationship to endure unless there is this passionate and aggressive straightforwardness and other people saying rather to be aware of other people's possible hurts and to, to not offend someone. What, what are we? What are the others? Do we know? Are our relationships intensely can one observe that in one's daily relationship not not have any conclusion about how one is related to each other but to watch it. and not any ideal images of how one should be related to each other because then we can't look, then we can't, then there can't be light shed on what is actually taking place. Are we ever, do we ever approach each other? Or something, a flower, looking at a cloud, or listening at a, a flowering bush, the grass or the clouds, without wanting anything. With no expectation. Is it possible? Does it ever happen? Or is there always expectation, always knowledge of what this is, what the person is like, what he should or she should be like, and therefore no relationship at all? possible to see each other, listen to each other?
as, as we are this moment, entirely as we are, see the expectation coming up that the person should be different and not go with it because it's seen and find out how it is without any expectation, without any separation from this stream of being. If the person is seemingly talking in, in, in platitudes or expressing anger or being forthright or not being forthright, being polite, hypocritical. Can one start there and drop all of those concepts about the other, about oneself, and look and listen in, in wonderment of what's actually there? Being together, part of this vast, deep, broad stream of whatever. Not separate, not standing on the bank of the river, judging, wanting, expecting, manipulating, controlling. Is that possible? Or can one see the urge to control, to manipulate, see the expectations come up, and realize that in that there is no perception of what is actually there, only perception of expectation, desire, fear, wanting. But not what's actually there. Always wanting it to be otherwise. within oneself or outside of oneself. One, one wouldn't even call that relationship. It's no separation then. No me and you. What's there? Which is not very different here in you, me, them, or us. It's always the same. somebody this past weekend was a, a woman who may have been in her in her 40s and then pretty soon it's bedtime and as day in day out the same thing happens, I wonder, so what? What's the meaning of it? It all seems so futile. What is the meaning of life? That's my question, so she said.
Is that our question? What is the meaning of life which seems in its repetitious daily routines so mechanical? Meaningless? Does a question like this concern one? Has one asked it oneself? Why does one ask a question like that? What is the meaning of life? Or as the, the, the breakfast is finished or the, the one drives to work, comes home and does some exercises and writes some letters, eats again and then nightfall and going to bed. This question, so what? What is it all about? Why does one ask that question? Where does it come from? It comes from, doesn't it, reflecting upon what one is doing? Thinking about it? Standing outside of it, as we said before, on the bank of the river? Not really part of it. A feeling of isolation. The pain of it. The loneliness of it. And all the wants and desires of it to be different. Not to be lonely. Not to feel isolated. To have meaning. We were walking through the woods at Springwater. It was late afternoon and the setting sun was casting its light through the red pine forest. Most of the lower branches have no needles. They're bare, but the branches are still there. And they shimmer with golden light when the sun is setting. All the little green plants pushing through the ground where it's moist there are these luscious skunk cabbages. Mayflowers, they push up like a closed umbrella, but some of the umbrellas are spreading out, opening up. There's a little white dot right in the center. And the leaves are so glossy, so shiny catching those last rays of the setting sun. The softness of the needles underfoot. Feeling. A, a, a budding branch, an opening leaf has, has no meaning beyond itself, does it? It doesn't need a meaning. One needs to look at it, sitting in a chair or on a mat, so that it is so clear that this leads to that and that leads to that. And when all of that is quiet, there's only what is. And that's not separate from oneself as an observer.
then the question comes up, how can I get to that state in which thought is quiet and there is not any feeling of separation? Can you give me a practice to get there? Do you see what we're doing? Wanting to do something for the sake of something else wanting a practice in order to feel meaning? Why can't we do, see, listen, feel, walk, talk, not for the sake of something else, but for its own sake? Or the mind that's there, not expecting things to be otherwise? Seeing want and quieting want in the seeing, then there's no separation. And the sound and the sight and the smell and the touch is what it is, not pointing away from itself towards some meaning. There is a question like that. Can one leave it, sit there, be there? And not give oneself an answer. And with that, put away the question. Just listen for a moment. Without expecting anything to come of it. Without looking for a reward or a result. Just listening the looking, without knowing, we will end here for tonight.